why should we care about the souls how in could purgatory? We, how could I know. we not care? Yeah, it, but it exists. Could, these are our yeah. these are our friends. These are yeah. our relatives, the people that we love, and we want as a Christian people, we want nothing more right, than uh, for them to be forever in the eternal joy of heaven. How are you doing, Your Grace? I'm doing well, Jenny. Yeah, How about you? Very good. Yeah, yeah. We're in a no a snowless November. Kind of weird. I saw a headline. Although kind of nice. Kind, it is very nice. Uh, I, yeah. I enjoy it. Apparently, I don't know if this is true, but the headline said that this is the first snowless November in Edmonton history. No Mind kidding. you, I didn't read the article, but that was well, the headline. It so could well be. Could well be. And I yeah. must say, you know, I'm not a winner kind of a guy. Yeah. Uh, well, so you, this is good. The, the Pope chose the wrong archdiocese for you then. Well, yeah, but you know, take <laughs> up your you cross, the follow snow. the Lord, and all that. No, listen, I, let me clarify that. I yeah. love being in Edmonton. Yes. In spite of the weather. Yes. Well, it's probably a common sentiment among, among many of us. Um, we we recently did uh, an episode on Advent, of course. We're mm-hmm. moving into Advent beginning on December 3rd. And one of the themes that you brought up about the season of Advent is repentance. The fact that it has that in common with Lent, the mm-hmm. liturgical an color. Element, sure. Yeah, the liturgical of uh, color of purple. And thinking about this theme of repentance and penitence, uh, purgatory comes to mind, right? Oh. It's, a, it's a great uh, teaching of the Catholic Church, of our understanding of a reality where souls go uh, to essentially, as I understand it, to do penance for the sins that haven't been purified here on earth. Yeah, we can, we can chat about that a little bit. But it, it does make sense that... We chat about this now. I mean, this this recording, the time of this particular recording, yeah. is still in November. It's the month when the church we, we focus our attention upon um, the faithful departed. You know, that's right. The call of the church to pray for them and so on. That's right. Yeah. Why is that's a good point? Why is November the month of souls? Well, there's a couple of a couple of reasons there. So first of all, uh, it's November first and second, right? So November first, feast of all saints, and then. November 2nd, the Feast of All Souls, All the Faithful Departed. But together with that, November is usually, um, well, usually it is. It's the, it's, it's the final a few weeks of the liturgical year when the scripture passages are pointing our attention towards the life that is to come. And so those those come together to make us reflect upon the mystery of death, the mystery of, of what follows. And uh, given the particular attention uh, to those uh Faithful departed who have died, it, it it draws our minds towards what happens, right? And and how do we how do we continue to support and accompany and, and pray for them in their in their journey towards eternal life? No, and it's a good point because November, of course, we're at the time of this recording, we're concluding November, the mm-hmm. month of souls, and then we're moving into Advent, which yep. in 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 many ways is a season of repentance. So that the theme and the topic of purgatory is it's a bridge and a tether between yeah. these two yeah. these two liturgical seasons. Yeah. And I, you know, as we talk about that, I hope people sometimes, and, and maybe there's not an understanding of purgatory, but sometimes I, I worry that people have this fear of it, if you will. Yeah. You know, for me, it's, um, it's, it's a very consoling dogma of the church and it, and it really arises out of the, of the truth that the Lord wants us to be with him forever, that the Lord is merciful, right? Um, that's really, as I see it, at, at the heart of this dogma of the church. Very consoling in that sense. What is purgatory for someone who may not know it all? All right, so let's, um, you know, what, what the church says generally is that when, when we die, uh, there is a, a moment of immediate judgment. We come before the Lord and face him as our, yes, our Lord, our, our, our master, our merciful king, but also our judge. And we're held to account um, for how we have lived our lives in accordance with the gospel. In some cases, that, that immediate judgment might be uh, to eternal beatitude. In other cases, it might be, it's a horrifying thought, but it might be to eternal damnation. Um for the bulk of, of those who have sought to follow Christ in their lives, um, there, there's, yes, hopefully we've, we've died in a state of grace, a state of friendship with God, but yet somehow there's still unfinished business, if, 
if I can put it that way, right? And uh, the Lord, in his mercy, will take us towards himself, but because we can only come into the presence of God when fully purified, fully freed from sin, there needs to be this period of purification, refinement, if I can put it that way, all guided by the Lord's love and mercy that we can be with him forever. So purgatory is, it's the spiritual porch to heaven. Well, purgatory, purgation, it's, 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 it's a purging, a refining, a, a moving, a getting rid of, the final getting rid of attachments of, 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 our, of our clinging to anything that is not consistent with the gospel. So is it a place specifically where sins we haven't repented of, we need to make, we need to repent, or is it more of a place, yeah, what, why would someone go to purgatory as opposed to directly into heaven? Well, we're somehow still attached, all right? Most of us die attached. Sin, sin has within itself, if I can put it this way, its own temporal punishment, in the sense that um, every sin reveals an attachment to something that is other than God, whether, for example, the sin of greed reveals an attachment to money. And an attachment to anything that lessens our life in communion with Christ is in that sense a punishment and is felt and experienced as a punishment in time, in our earthly time, a temporal punishment. Um, And to the degree that that attachment, that punishment still clings to us as we as we leave this life towards the next, it needs to be purified, purged, the purgation. Um, there's a scriptural basis for this. Now you're not going to find um, you're not going to find the word purgatory in scripture, but the essence of the concept is there. So, for example, in in the book of Maccabees, it speaks about them recognizing the need to pray for the dead. Or if you look at Saint Paul's teaching, it's in uh, third chapter, First Corinthians talks about being saved, so salvation, being saved, as though through fire, an image of the purgation, the purifying, of the refinement. So we can find a scriptural basis there. And it also would arise, I'd say, from reflection upon, reflection over the centuries, right? Upon the mercy of God and upon God's desire for us to be with him forever, as well as reflection upon the truth that we all know, that we're weak, we're fallible, we sin, and we, we develop attachments that are, that are less than holy. And so, yes, we can die in a state of friendship with Christ, having tried as best we could to follow him under grace, and yet find ourselves at that moment um, still attached. So because God is so merciful, because he wants us with him forever, the church has, again with the scriptural warrant, has has reached this understanding defined in dogma that the Lord will purify us. He will heal us. That precise is that his will in us can be fulfilled. You talked about the book of Maccabees, Uh which is often referenced as, uh, as an apologetic for, for purgatory. And if I remember correctly, there's the figure of Judas Maccabeus. I might be Mm -hmm. mispronouncing that. Uh, And he, he was the one, the, the Jewish freedom fighter, I guess you could say, who prayed for the souls of his men who had died. Yeah. Uh, and I think the scripture also said, if it were not a good thing to pray for the dead, if it were not effective, yeah. what would have been the point of praying for the dead? Yeah, yeah, very true, yeah. And I think it was because he, some of his men were found with false idols on their right. bodies, so they were concerned for the state of their of well, these that, dead that, men's souls. That's interesting as you say that, because the the, the amulet, okay, that, that, that can be seen to represent an attachment clearly to something other than God. They died attached, right? And so not not pure, not holy, not perfect. And the Lord says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Another scriptural basis for understanding the need to be perfected by the mercy of God before we enter into eternal communion with him. So in a sense, the, the theology, the, the, the idea of purgatory, it existed before Christianity was formed. It, it existed, I mean, these... Jewish freedom fighters in in the book of Maccabees in the Old Testament, these were these were men who preceded yeah. Jesus. Yeah, and but the base the basis would be the the beautiful act of praying for the dead, and so praying for the dead must have a particular object. Right, so mm-hmm. the dead must have a need for our prayers. 
what would that need be? And as the church continued to ponder this, in the mercy of God and our weakness and sin and so on, that need would be for a purification, a purgation, before entering into the beatific vision. Okay, so there's the sense of, of course, us still on earth, considering the fact that we may one day uh, be in purgatory in order to be purified before heaven. But then there's also us here on earth praying for the yeah. souls who are in purgatory. Yeah. Why Why should we care about the souls how in could purgatory? We, how I could know. we not care? Yeah, but heavens, it takes, how could, these, are our, yeah. these are our friends, these are our yeah. relatives, the people that we love. And we want, as a Christian people, we want nothing more right, than uh, for them to be forever in the eternal joy of heaven. What, what more could we want for our brothers and sisters in humanity, right? Or especially those that, that we love that have, been, that have been part of our lives. We don't know, of course, what the state of their soul is when they die. We don't know that. Right. But it could well be that there's a need for purifying, you know, following their death. And as long as that's a possibility, then, boy, oh, boy, I'm going to be praying. Praying that the Lord will, will heal them with his love and bring them with him forever. Okay, so so to play devil's advocate, of, co of course, when you, you love someone, especially if they've passed away, of course you care about the state of their soul, right? And, sure. and if they're in suffering in purgatory, you want them to get out. But at the same time, I've, I've often thought purgatory means you're guaranteed heaven. So why should, you know, in a sense, why should we... Why should we be worried about when they're they're, they're already in? You know what I mean? No, they're not. All right, okay. it's, it's an intermediate. Okay. It's on right. on routes on on the way. So the the communion is not yet complete, right? Yeah. We that so that that sense of the in between, not yet. You know, being with the Lord, we'd want that to be as short as possible. Now, here we can encounter the limitations of human language and human concepts, right? Because you know, in, in the next world, time is conceived and experienced very, very differently than, than it is here. So we have to relativize our use of the terms in that sense. But nevertheless, using that, we do not want our loved ones to be separated from the Lord unduly. We want them, so we pray. We pray that the purgation happen and that, and that they be set free. You talked earlier about how some people may fear purgatory um, because of the experience of pain that is inherent in, the, in that state. That, but at the same time, this is hearkening back to my earlier question, if you don't have to fear hell, because hell's the real, that's a proper and understandable fear. You don't want to go to hell because that's forever. It's eternal. There's no going back. Whereas purgatory, as you said, of course, it does mean, it does mean that you're still separated from God. Uh, but again, you're guaranteed heaven. You're not going to be locked in purgatory well, it could eternally. Well be that the fear arises from a lack of understanding. So the idea of, of the fire, all right? So yeah. that just that just kind of creates this impression of physical pain. It's the human mind trying to get around what what might be. Saint Paul's words is as though through fire. So the sense of refinement that that refining that purgation can happen in ways that are. Experience, say, for example, the experience of profound regret. Mm -hmm. Regret at what has happened in my life or the mistakes that I have made. That in itself can be experienced like, like a fire, like a fire that's, that's purifying me and, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and healing me that, that this not take place again even, even while I'm here on earth. So yeah. um, how, how that purgation, how that fire, quote-unquote, that purifying is in fact experienced by the souls. We we cannot say, right? yeah. uh, but it, but it would be experienced as a as a growth, a growth of pain. Um, um, whether we understand that as regret or the or the pain of tears, whatever that might be. Keep the thing to keep in mind, though, is that it's it's God's agency. It's God doing the healing. It's God doing the purifying. A God. So it's God not who, Satan. Yeah. yeah no. No. no, God who loves us beyond, beyond our imagining. Right? So um, just like here on earth, the Lord will uh, lead us through circumstances that could be painful, that could be difficult, that can be, get to feel like a fire um, in that sense. But the Lord allows it to happen. The Lord accompanies us through it for the sake of the purifying of our souls, for the sake of growth in holiness that we might, move along that path towards him. Same thing in that time of purgatory. It's the Lord at work purifying, mm -hmm. healing.
healing. So we can experience it as a painful thing, as a regretful thing. Certainly, it's the Lord's work. It's our Father. It's our yeah, which makes all the difference Father. who's there's, doing the purifying. But there's the consolation. Right. right there. I can look back at my own life at, at mistakes or difficult circumstances that, gosh, I wish that never happened. But at the same time, kind of glad it did because I can look back now and see how the Lord used that to refine me, to purify me. Very painful at the time. Mm-hmm. Yet he brought me through it in a way that, that has helped me to move along the pathway of holiness. So by analogy, the same, same in purgatory. And the more I think about that, the more hopeful, the more I feel, or the more consoling it is for me. God's not giving up on me. He's not giving up on me. You know, he continues to work on on my soul to heal and bring me to Himself. I have a I have a friend, and she recently completed her master's in divinity, huh. and uh, she has a great love for a lot of the uh, traditions of the church, uh, especially some that are, are not as commonly practiced anymore. And she shared with me uh, the the tradition of the octave of souls, uh, eight days at the beginning of November. Mm. Um, and I was looking it up and it brought to, uh, it, it acknowledged this idea of obtaining an indulgence for souls in purgatory, mm-hmm. a plenary indulgence. And the, the simple idea is that, um, with certain acts of repentance, going to mass, going to confession, we're able to actually quote unquote, get souls out of purgatory. I often heard that. I've heard that phrase used. Yeah. yeah. What What is this idea of 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 obtaining an indulgence for for um, souls in purgatory? Well, the idea of an indulgence. I often I, just just to begin there. I often make the comparison, and I've heard many people make this comparison. I think very helpfully to parents dealing with with a child who's done something wrong, right? Yeah. And so the the child, let's say for example, the child has stolen something. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so the child says sorry to mom and dad. Mom and dad give forgiveness. Restitution is given. But mom and dad might still say, you know what? We think uh, as part of the consequences, there should be a kind of a temporal punishment assigned to the child, okay. often experienced as a grounding. right? Yeah. But then as the, as the parents look at this, they see that the child through the period of being grounded, be- precisely because of that punishment, is starting to show signs of a deeper self-awareness and a commitment not to do this again, they might lessen that time partially or just lift it altogether. The parents, in that sense, being indulgent or granting an indulgence towards towards their child. Now, when it comes to um, uh, ind- indulgences that, that, that release us from the temporal punishment due to sin, we need to think about that differently. So as, as I was saying earlier, um, sin comes with its own temporal punishment experienced as attachment and the one who can release from that temporal punishment is not ourselves but only God mm-hmm. and that release from the temporal punishment certainly through this earthly life is experienced along the lines of conversion ever deeper conversion God working within our hearts now um, much like I suppose parents in order to help their children in various circumstances might undertake sacrifices themselves sacrifice themselves for the sake of the well-being of the child. Uh, there's nothing to say that we cannot make sacrifices ourselves for the well-being of other souls on, on, uh, in, in terms of their relationship with God. And so that can take the place of fasting, uh, doing penance, going to, going to Mass, praying the Rosary, and these sorts of things. To, so the degree that we will pray for people all on, while they're still on earth, many, we'll, we'll hear many stories of people who, offer their particular suffering to God for the sake of the conversion of another. Mm-hmm. That's that's not unheard of. Yeah, we see the saints doing that, fasting for the sake Abs- of others. Absolutely. Well, why could we not then apply the same principle and do that for those who are undergoing purification mm-hmm. in purgatory? But don't you think it takes a, a, quite an expansion of heart to really care about souls that have already died? A lot of us are just so occupied with our lives we're trying to avoid sin ourselves. We have so many, I guess it, it seems, perhaps I speak for others too, that it seems like quite a, quite an extraordinary thing to be able to actually think and care about, especially people we don't know in purgatory. Well, if it's an extraordinary thing, get get beyond that. Okay, <laughs> right? okay. And start, start praying, <laughs> you know. I mean, uh, love one another. Love right. one another. We understand that means sacrifice for one another and so on. 
And we are, see, this is another beautiful, beautiful part of the tradition of the church, the communion of saints, right? Mm. So even though people uh, leave us uh, through death, we still remain united with them through the communion of saints, the communion of souls. And, and so we're, we're still connected, right? So in the same way that we're kind of connected uh, visibly here with our brothers and sisters on earth, we remain connected with those who have gone before us. So as we do for one another here, let's do as well for those that are, that are, um, that have passed and keep them in mind and keep praying for them. There is, uh, speaking of, of the tradition of the church, there's this uh, idea of the church militant, the church suffering and the church huh. triumphant. Yep. And I know that this definitely relates to purgatory. Can you describe what those three are? So the church militants, well, we're here on earth, right? That's so we're, we're, we're struggling. Okay. We're struggling. And, and, you know, to use scriptural terms, we're struggling in the midst of what we understand to be a spiritual battle here on earth, you know? Now, the church militant, or right, we have to be careful of how we use those terms because as St. As Paul will tell us, the, the weapons of this that we bear is in, and use as Christians are the, are the weapons of faith of truth and of love, right? So not, it's not a, a violent kind of a concept that live in this militant struggle. Church triumphant is, 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 the, is, is all those who are now um, with the Lord in heaven, in eternal joy. And this, the church suffering is this in-between. So those members of the church who are now in that in-between time of uh, earthly death mm-hmm. and eternal communion with God, moving through that, that uh, period of purgatory. Yeah, and that kind of emphasizes, well, it really does emphasize that spirit of, of the communion of saints, the yeah. fact that we're all the church, the, the militant, the suffering, the triumphant, and we're all, we're we're all, we're all together. We're all one, and it's, we're all one by God's grace, by God's mercy. He's in charge always, right? Yeah. And we just, wherever we are, we just surrender to his mercy, we, we surrender to his word, mm-hmm. and, and, and just leave it up to him. Why is the church militant called militant? Again, it's that sense of, Militating, struggling, if oh, I can okay. put it that way, against the the spiritual forces of evil in our in our hearts and in our world. Well, as we we near the end of, of this particular episode, I thought to um, just refer to a quote that Saint Augustine made about purgatory. I was reading oh. a couple of different thoughts of, of different saints, church fathers, um, particularly relating to the idea of fearing purgatory and mm-hmm. what the experience is, which I know is to a certain level it's it's speculation, right? right. Um, but he said in, in pretty simple terms, he said that that fire will be more painful than anything man can suffer in the present life. So fire and purgatory. Yeah. And St. Bonaventure said very similar things. Basically it's, it's going to, it's worse than anything we experience on earth. Uh, and partly it's because we see so clearly how terrible sin is. Like our hearts are breaking oh, because that, we think, Oh yeah. my goodness. Hey, it's, it's the pain. It's the fire, if you will, of the broken heart. And anybody who's had their heart broken knows just how painful that is. Mm-hmm. Yet keep always in mind that this fire is God's work mm-hmm. in order to heal. Right? So there, there again is the basis of confidence, even as we, as we realize that, that that can be, even though in ways that we can't conceive, mm-hmm. painful time, but it's, it's a salvific pain. Right? It's, a, it's, it's aimed by God's own will and action at purifying our souls and leading us to him. So as we, we move uh, deeper into Advent, uh, how, how would you encourage the faithful to, to engage with that spirit of, of praying for souls, of doing penance for our own souls as well as for, for others? Well, just just look at different ways in which each day you can make a sacrifice, in which you can give up something, right? Um, and offer that, mm-hmm. offer that to the Lord. And, and keep in mind in a particular way the tradition that we have in the church of offering Mass, having Mass offered for the souls in purgatory. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, go to the priest and, Father, would, could you offer Mass for so-and-so? Mm-hmm. And the offering of the Mass is on behalf of that person uniting my life who is offering the life of the one for whom it is being offered with the sacrifice of Christ, Mm -hmm. knowing that that is all sufficient for salvation. 
Okay. Well, one of the, the interesting traditions that I've also seen within the church regarding souls in purgatory is, is the tradition of just going to a seminary, cemetery, I was going to say a sem, seminary, <laughs> but not there, uh, a cemetery and, uh, and walking amongst the tombstones, praying yeah. a rosary. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot of beautiful cemeteries here in this Edmonton Very well cared area. For. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that I. Any thoughts on that idea of going to a cemetery and praying? Right well, there. Well, you know, um, I haven't been able to do it lately. But one of the things that I, and I want to find ways to continue to do it, is is I'll go out and I'll have mass uh, once a year with people who have come to the cemetery to pray for their departed dead. And I, I just, I just, my heart is always so moved to see. See, first of all, of course, the pain that's in their hearts, but but it's a pain that's tempered, if I can put it that way, by their faith, the faith that they really are holding on to with a deep conviction that death's not the last word, all right? And they're there to pray for their loved ones, again, for that, that purification that they be with the Lord forever. And uh, I know when I go home to Halifax, I like to get out and visit the cemetery where my parents are buried. And my two sisters and my brother and I will usually find time to get there, stand at the, stand at their, at their uh, graveside, and just pray for them. Right, and and the prayer, and and uh, uh, Dad, when he got the tombstone for for Mum, Mum, she died first. Um, he had on the on the, the bottom of it the inscription, "Eternal rest grant unto them, and let and let perpetual light shine upon them." That's that's the beautiful prayer that we pray for those who have died, eternal rest. Give them, Lord. It's the Lord's work. Give them eternal rest and let that perpetual light shine upon. So that's that's the heart of the prayer that's animating us when we go to the cemetery uh, to be reminded of, of of our loved ones. And in fact, our Holy Cross Cemetery just had a beautiful expansion that I went out and and blessed. And anybody that goes out and, and sees what's there, they'll they'll see in the beauty of the place, in the quiet dignity of the place, uh, the deep, deep respect that the church has uh, for, for the faithful departed, the commitment of the church to pray for them, and the commitment of the church to welcome and walk with those who are grieving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so true. And we'll, and we'll, leave, a, we'll leave a link also in the show notes for people to, to see um, more information about yeah, our sure. local cemeteries. Yep. Yeah, they're doing such just beautiful work. It's a, it's a ministry yes, so, of the church, caring for the uh, dead. Uh, Absolutely yeah. right, in a, in a beautiful ministry. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, perhaps we could, we could close in a prayer. Sure, yeah. sure. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your salvific will, all of which you have made known and active in your Son, Jesus. That love, that mercy which you pour into our hearts by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we pray throughout our earthly journey, You continue to purify us. Help us to hold fast to your purifying love that we may be healed of anything that separates us from you and be be made holy by your grace. And we pray for those who have died, those that you will to have with you forever. And we pray that again, by your mercy and love, you heal them, purify them, and free them to be with you for all eternity. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you. Your You're grace. welcome. Yeah, really appreciate it. Sure. Um, and for anyone who's listening, uh, you can head to the show notes. There's information about Advent services, um, penitential services during this season of Advent, uh, as well as some of the some even more details on the church's teaching on purgatory. So be sure to check that out. Great. And uh, we'll see you next week. Okay. Yeah. God bless. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you found it helpful along your, your journey of faith. Please know that I'm praying for you. And if you would, be so kind as to pray for us also. Every blessing to you. God bless. God bless.